This video is for LXL Economics Unit 4 and it's an introduction to topics of poverty and income inequality specifically focused on how we go about measuring those as economists. Focusing on poverty first, have a look at these two images and just thinking about what the words mean here, what the word absolute would mean and what the word relative would mean, think about which of these people is in the position of absolute poverty and which are in the position of relative poverty. Just pause the video now, have a think about it, and then work out your answer before you move on. Moving on then, in terms of definitions, absolute poverty, which was the person on the right hand side there, you, in that situation that is someone who lacks the basic necessities to survive. So things like food, clothing and shelter, they do not have access to those or enough of those to be able to actually live. Um, the World Bank have a general worldwide definition for absolute poverty, which is if you're living on less than $1.25 a day, that's US dollars. The World Bank created this uh, in an attempt to just make a very easy way of calculating absolute poverty and a very easy way of comparing poverty levels between different countries around the world. It's not obviously a, a perfect measurement because the cost of living in some countries is much higher than in others but it's a very useful and very commonly used one. If we look at relative poverty, that's defined as where you are poor relative to the other people within your country. Your income is very low compared to that of other people. There are lots of different definitions in relative poverty. Uh, the UK's definition, one of the ones that's most commonly used, is where if you're earning less than 60% of the median income in the country, so for this you've got to work out the median income first of all, and then look at what 60% of that is. Anyone earning less than that would be considered to be in relative poverty. So they're relatively poor compared to everyone else in their country. Okay, that's the key things you need to bear in mind in terms of measuring poverty. Moving on to look at income inequality. Two different ways you can measure it, and they're both closely related. The first one we're going to look at is the Lorenz curve. You, to calculate your Lorenz curve, what you first of all need to do is uh, look at the data for the different quintiles of your population. And we've got some data here for the United Kingdom and the United States. A quintile is 20%, so this data here for both of these countries would add up to 100 in total, so that it covers the whole population. Focus on the UK's data, what it's saying here is the poorest 20% of people in the UK, first quintile, have 6.5% of the total income in the UK. The next poorest 20% have 11.5% and so on. So the richest 20% of people in the UK have 43% of the UK's total income. Once you've calculated that data or you've collected that data, you then plot it on a graph like you can see here. So on your axis you have the cumulative percentage of income and on the cum cumulative percentage of households on the other axis. What that means is that all your lines just start at 0, 0 and finish at 100, 100 because we're covering the whole of the population. Because it's cumulative so we're adding all those numbers together as we're going along. And um, that's the same for income as well, it's covering all the income in the country. So you can see for the UK, First quintile, 6.5. first 20% have 6.5% of the income, so you'd plot where 20% and 6.5 meet. The 40% plot for the UK, you'd have to plot it where 40% lines up with 6.5 plus 11.5, which would be 18. So the 40% uh, of households would line up with that point on the cumulative percentage of income axis. So you plot all those points on your graph and then you can see here we've got a Lorenz curve for the UK, the blue one, and a Lorenz curve for the United States, the red one. The green line here represents perfect equality, so if everyone in the country was equal, if everyone had the same percentage of income. So the further away from that green line you are, the more unequal your society is, or the distribution of income in your country is. So from this what we can uh, deduce is that the United States has higher rates of income inequality than the UK, although only fairly slightly. What we tend to do as economists more commonly is rather than having to draw these graphs, we tend to have some data that's much more easy to represent and easy to, to visualise. Um, and it's called the Gini coefficient. 
That's calculated by, if you look at our graph here, A, which is the grey area on the line, on the graph, divided by the area A plus B. So the area between the 45 degree line and the Lorentz curve divided by the whole area underneath the 45 degree line. Do that calculation and what you then get from that is you get a number. And that number is your Gini coefficient. You see some data here, we've got some examples of Gini coefficient data for different countries um, around the world. Now the larger the number that you get from that, the more unequal the income is in that country, the greater the income inequality. So for example in our set of countries here we've got Ukraine at 25.6 is the most equal of these six countries and Ecuador at 49.3 is the most unequal. In terms of Gini index data sometimes it's represented like this as a number between 0 and 100 or you'll sometimes see it represented as a number between 0 and 1. It doesn't matter, it means the same thing. So for example here Ukraine's at 25.6 might alternatively be illustrated as 0.256. It means the same thing, it's just different. Organisations will analyse and present the data in slightly different ways. Key advantage about this Gini index data, which is very quick and very easy, you can just look at that table and you can immediately say, out of these countries, Ecuador is the most unequal, Ukraine is the most equal. And that concludes this introduction to the different methods of measuring both poverty and income inequality. If you've got any questions, don't forget to drop us a tweet at Dizzle Education.